Hi, welcome to Al-Muqaddimah, my name is Siawish. So recently, Hikmah History and I talked in a live stream in which we talked about a lot of interesting stuff and answered a lot of questions. Uh, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, be sure to check out the whole live stream. But there was one topic that I really enjoyed talking about and it's the kind of thing that I would never make a video on. So I just wanted to share that clip and give you a little bit of context. Before that, I'd like to say that it's alternate history and it's a bit of a touchy topic. It involves religion and religious figures. So it's um, so it's alternate history, which is already very, very biased. Uh, and in, my, in this case, it's purely my opinion and you don't have to agree with it. And with that in mind, I'll leave you to the clip. Well, do you want to touch this? You don't talk pre-661, but the Umayyads, we can just... No, I don't talk about pre-661 in my videos and my live streams we can talk about all of that stuff if you want um do you think if the umayyads never came to power the borders of the khalifa khalifa would be different yeah of course they would why wouldn't they but what would come instead of them well it depends on which umayyads you're talking about if muavia didn't exist oh yeah no gonna... was such an important guy man it's really not gonna look good and i actually if in my opinion, and of course it's all history, it's my opinion, but I think if Muawiyah didn't exist, then Islam would solely be an Arabic religion. It would probably not break out. Whoa! Okay, okay. You have to uh, explore, elaborate on that one for me, because that's a well, wild statement. Muawiyah, he held the caliphate together, right? You you have a caliphate that has just come out of, civil, of a civil war, a civil yeah. war that started like 30 years after the death of the prophet. So you have 30 years of stability and then you have five years of a bloody war. Mm -hmm. And then let's say Muawiyah doesn't come to power. What would happen is local lords, especially in Iran, would rise up. Muawiyah was Muawiyah over his 20 years, his 20 years of great reign uh, in which he kept everything together. He kept everything under control. He, you know, stabilize the thing um without him stabilizing the whole thing and you you have to you you know that you you agree that the caliphate was very very unstable when muavia came to power right uh, well, to be honest with you i think it was unstable throughout all of it like I don't, there's it's like a couple of decades or maybe one good generation here and there where it wasn't uh unstable but the whole mm -hmm. period was unstable do you yeah. think about the 680s mm-hmm the third Muawiyah, fitna or yes. the second fitna? The second fitna. Yeah. Yeah. The exactly. Fitna? That's yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Without without Moavia, you would have the whole thing falling apart. You would have Iran going to local lords, and at that point, I imagine the Turks would attack, and Turks would come sweeping in like the Seljuks, but like two centuries earlier, they would come sweeping in through Iraq and Iran, Iraq all the way to Syria. And I imagine that they would have been able to, and on the other side, you would have the Byzantine Empire. So all of the Islam, the, the progress that Muslims have made, it would go back into Arabia. That's that's how I imagine it. I I don't, I, I love the, because I've never really heard that before. So I like the fact that you're saying it, but I don't know if I agree. I think you're placing far too much emphasis on Mawia at the detriment of the infrastructure that was built up. Um, and I know that Mawiyah was a very, very important cornerstone of that uh, stable infrastructure that was built up. But to, I don't, I feel like it's too, it's an exaggeration to say that it wouldn't have happened without him. Because think about some of the other governors, the talented people in early Islam, right? Military generals, uh, regional commanders. Um, what about What about them? What about their role? How, how how was it that prior to Mawiya, because think about it, right? In 661, I know the Umayyads, they pushed the expansion of Islam to its maximum extent. But even pre-661, like at, in the year 661, the Rashidun Khilafah's, uh, Khilafah's map was, was incredible. Like it was humongous. By that point, they've conquered all of Iran. They've gone, they've conquered northern Afghanistan as well. And in the West, they've gone all the way to Libya, yeah, Libya, Tunisia. All the way to Tunisia, actually, I think. No, I think Tunisia was 670. Ka Kairouan, I think yeah, it was yeah. 670. But yeah. yeah, so they're like between Libya and Tunisia. That's quite quite a lot. And Mawia, in that regard, only played a very... No, in the expansion, he didn't really play any role, did he? Let me talk to. Let me t talk about that. So we have, we have, first of all, Abu Bakr the first caliph. Go on. He, 
stabilizes the Muslim empire after the death of the Prophet. With the Ridda wars and all of that, yes. Yeah. Then we have Umar who expands the empire. Yes. As long as the empire ex is expanding, there's enough money coming into the capital to keep everyone happy. Okay. And Umar was powerful enough that everybody, when he issued a command, everybody just listened. Not always. I mean, with, with the conquest of Egypt, he was against the conquest of Egypt, but that happened. Uh, then we have Uthman. Uthman was not able to rule, right? Uh, because of how weak the whole caliphate was. You're talking about infrastructure, but there actually was not that much infrastructure to rule. When and that's a fair point, but the expansion. So, but I feel like it still undermines your point because you're saying that as long as there was expansion happening and money coming in to, to the treasury, then things were going to be okay. But that was exactly what was happening under Omar, Usman. Yeah. Uh, with, so, with under Uthman, it had slowed down. You know. Uh, okay, so people are like, okay, yeah. see, this is this is where religion comes into the whole thing. People don't like Muawiyah. Uh, so with with Ali, you have um, with, with Uthman, you have a man who's trying to rule the empire. There's uh, expansion happening very slow compared to Omar's reign, uh, but it's still happening. And there's a little bit of money coming in. But you are starting to see the cracks form. You're starting to see that all these people who are working together to fight, they don't like each other. And so there's problems starting to appear. Um, and then you come to Ali's reign and there's a civil war over Moabia, over Uthman's assassination. Um and you come to begin with Moabia's reign. What you have is not a government. What you have is a is an army. It's being paid by a caliph and a couple of cities all over the empire that are Muslim. You have Kufa, you have Basra, you have uh, Fustat, you have um, Kairawan, which comes in later. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so you have all these these things. If Moabia was not a Moabia gave the empire, the, the 20 years of respite, of rest that it needed to actually crystallize into something. You know, mm. without him, what would have happened is this civil war would have, you know, without a civil war, uh, the caliph's authority would have, would have diminished almost to a point where it doesn't exist anymore. Um, so what did he, for the people who are watching, that's a very good point, actually. I like that. I, I want to help you out. For the people who are watching, what exactly did he do within the realm of administration that you keep talking about uh, in terms of the infrastructure crystallizing? He actually didn't do that much. That's that's the whole thing. I mean, when he dies, we see another civil war because mm -hmm. there was no structure. He did not, he, he failed to establish a structure. What he did was um, he, like I think Michael Cooperson uh, puts it really well. He says that he built a house of cards he stabilized it, but he built it on his palm. And as soon as he died, the whole thing came tumbling down. But Moabia's own personality, he knew everyone. He kept everyone in check. He knew all the tribes. He visited everyone. He kept relationships with everyone. He kept the whole thing stable. If you wanted something, Moabia talked to you. He fixed the problem. So t in, within those 20 years, the idea of Islam, the idea of this government, it sort of dissipated into the public. The public began to understand that we're under a new ruler and he's not bad and, and islamic rule is not bad we start seeing less resistance to muslim rule um can i, can I ask you a question can i push back so but what about the pre mawiyah period where yes you would have a khalif that would be based in wherever kufa medina wherever it was um but then you would have provincial governors and those provincial governors would be responsible for making sure that things were okay in their own region and they would have to s send taxes to the imperial khalif uh, khalif's office isn't that a very high criteria for having effective administration true but what happens when those um, those generals didn't want to listen to you the caliph i mean that happened with uthman people didn't listen to him that's, right. the, that's the exact reason that he resorted to nepotism. He had to put his own cousins and family members in power everywhere so that they would be with him. So they, they would. And this is you would it, it would seem from an Islamic perspective as a bad thing. But 
very often we see that um, if a king is having trouble, he would put his own relatives in positions of power to consolidate power, to have uh, make sure that people... I mean, with, even with Umar, Umar, wa- Umar didn't want to invade Egypt, but uh, um, uh, Umar, Umar ibn al-As wanted to, and then he overruled him through the, um, uh, the, the shura. Um, but with, with Uthman, the shura did not actually, you know, it was not as powerful anymore, and people basically did what they wanted. And uh, and Uthman, while he ruled, he ruled with a very light hand because, I mean, of course, you know, the guy got assassinated and he didn't even have an, enough people to defend himself in Medina. Mm-hmm. You know, this mm-hmm. is this was the state of the caliphate. People forget that this was the state of the caliphate when Ali came to power. So mm-hmm. Muawiyah, for his 20 years, he crystallized the empire. And then after him, there was a civil war and the whole thing. But mm-hmm. without him, I really think that the caliphate would have fallen apart. And there would have been a lot of Muslim lords as well. When you Basra, Kufa, all of these would have crystallized into, into smaller empires. Uh, but I think, in my opinion, Iran would have come out and Turks would have attacked. That's my opinion. Of the whole I hear what you're saying, and I can see why you think like that, but I feel like you're giving a little bit undue credit to Mawia. You know who I think is a probably the most important person in Islam uh, who doesn't get the credit? Mm-hmm. Like, not the most important person in Islam, but the the least credited. The um, one. Yeah. Do you know who it is? You want to take a guess, or you're gonna make me talk to myself?